In our previous video, recording electric guitar part 2, we placed four different microphones at different locations and at different distances in front and in back of a guitar amplifier. We measured the time arrival differences between all the mics and used plugins to precisely delay the closer mics so that they lined up with a distant mic. In this video, we are going to combine the mics in different ways to suit different musical styles. One of our mics is a Sennheiser MD421 placed behind this open-backed amp. The speaker cone moves away from this mic when it moves toward the other mics, so we need to invert or flip its polarity. We can do this with a plug-in, but most DAWs can do this in a way that lets you see the change in the waveform. Notice how the polarity is now matched between the tracks. This makes a huge difference in the sound. I'll demonstrate by combining the SM57 in front of the amp with the 421 at the rear and using a plug-in to invert the polarity. The rear mic can really add some bone-crushing lows to your heavy sounds, but it can also add richness and depth to your clean sounds. Great blues players typically play with a dynamic technique, using hard and soft picking to accentuate different notes. They also tend to cover a wide range on the instrument. Let's start with the spacious sound of our distant condenser cardioid and then pull in the MD-421 to add some presence and definition to the hard pick attacks. Then we'll bring up the Royer R101 to add some creamy mids. <laughs> Sometimes in a punk mix, we need a tight, mid-rangey, distorted sound. Let's start with the solid mids of the Royer R101, add some bite from the SM57, and fill out the lower mids with the rear 421. <laughs> So far, we have been listening to our tracks panned center, in mono. Guitar solos sound great panned center, but usually you will want your rhythm guitars panned out to the side to make room for things like vocals and bass in the center. We are going to pan three mics all the way to the left, which can sound great in a larger mix. But you can add a little width and realism to your sound by panning one of your mics a bit more towards the center. all the way to the other side is an option, but the resulting image can be smeared, making it hard to tell exactly where the guitar is coming from. In our next video, recording electric guitar part 4, we will set up a figure 8 mic that will allow us to add some simulated stereo ambience while keeping the image clear. We will also introduce a cool technique called reamping. For now, let's turn on all our mics and let Alex play us out.